and the Minister of Local Government, Public Works and National Housing, uh, Honorable Chigosho, the Director Como, uh, fellow uh, councillors from the city of Harare, and other local authorities participating with us today, our partners from USAID Sarah, from the World Bank, from ZIA, our other stakeholders, the media, and uh, the executives from the city of Harare and any other local authorities participating today. It's certainly been a sad week for local government. We've lost three heavyweights in, in, inside one week, apart from my deputy, who have also lost the town clerk of the city of Plauyo, uh, Mr. Milton Yoni, and we've also lost all the Chakabu, the former mayor of Mashingo. So it's been a heavy week in terms of um, uh, local government heavyweight. May their dear souls rest in peace. We are gathered here to respond to ratings, and ratings will always come. Um, I think the biggest trigger to this one has been the ease of doing business survey around uh, Zimbabwe, which, like other uh, surveys, including the livability index, have not been fair and favorable to the city and to the country. We have, uh, we have suffered uh, sustained law rankings. So that's what has triggered processes preceding this one and this particular one. These ratings can be global, like the ones I've made reference to. They can also be local, like where Blau is consistently rated higher uh, than, than Arare or than any other city in terms of uh, the municipality and how it's run. They can be institutional, they can be individual. They can be very scientific where the parameters are known and a specific template is employed to arrive at certain ratings. But they can also be subjective where someone just makes an opinion. That's an emotional, individual evaluation, valid all the same, but maybe not as scientific as others. Our duty is not to fight any negative <coughs> rating. Our duty is to pick and fix. Let's identify, let's pick the answer book and identify how did Harare end up being rated 170 out of 180. Let's see which of the uh, benchmarks, which of the parameters we can fix. So, so, so instead of being defensive, let's pick and fix. Let's pick and fix, let's play our part. That's why we got that here. Because out of those ratings, someone has to make a decision and we are compet competing for that decision. It could be a business decision, it could be the hosting of a conference, it could be the allocation of, of development funds, it could be the allocation of investment funds. We are competing with all the countries that we are bidding against. Someone sitting in America, on a world map, if he does this, the distance between Lusaka, Haboroni, Joburg, Maputo is exactly the same. So out of the five cities that I've made mentions, mentioned to, he will choose the one that's most attractive in terms of processes, in terms of climate, in terms of investment climate. All the factors that make an investor or a partner decide, they are not unique to a country. They are available for, for decision making across a number of countries within a region. I pick the fact that out of nine processes, four reside within the municipal jurisdiction. Four of the nine processes required to do business reside within councils. I also I made aware that 54 of the 90 days that are known to be taken are within council processes. Those two indications already tell us that more than half the problem can be fixed by local authorities. Kigali is a well-respected performer in terms of processes. Most of their processes are known to be managed within seven days. And here we're talking 90 days. <coughs> and you are responsible for half of the processes. We should be now copying and pasting and saying, what does Kigali do right? What does Kigali do that we are not doing? How quickly can we copy and paste and have a different Harare? A Harare that's closer to or better than Kigali. A few months back, I sent a request to my fellow councillors to Google executive orders from a White House scenario, President of America. Executive orders are 
instructions issued directly by the president bypassing Congress in order to effect certain things in minimum terms. My asking counselors to Google this and understand it was so that if there are opportunities to make sure that certain processes in council are shortened and fast-tracked by avoiding waiting for a committee that may meet after three weeks, then the council that may meet after five weeks. If something is strategic, so strategic importance, and it's important enough for us to converge and meet or fast-track the process, let's do it. We can never have a one-size-fits-all template which allows us to look at a, the planning process for a shop in Warren Park from a hundred million dollar project. There is no priority ranking. Everything goes through council committees, through full council at the same pace, same day, same, same, same time frame. We are denying someone who's bringing 20 million into the city the speed what that their project size merits. We could find a way of moderating the executive order scenario to something that fits the city. We could be saying if the mayor can command five signatures from ten of his chairpersons, that decision is almost given the nod. Maybe put some other checks and balances, perhaps even the, the, the relevant committee chairperson can put a veto. Something just allows us to do some things in 48 hours. If we think it can be done quickly by harnessing five signatures and the mayor signs it, that's already six out of ten. And in 48 hours, we've got almost a yes answer. And you can tell the prospective investor we are good to go, instead of making them wait for 90 days. We must never be simply trying to create a dictator out of a mayor or a chairperson or a number of chairpersons, but we're simply saying the processes and the time frames need to be revisited. I'm speaking from two points of strength. The new minister of local government has indicated in his first few weeks that it cannot be business as usual anymore. And that's loud enough, that's clear enough, that's one statement. The other statement is council, particularly our council in Harare, is dominated by MDCT councillors. For 16 years, Chinjamai Tiro has been our war cry. Those two should be empowering enough. The ministerial noises that it can't be business as usual. The slogan noises that Chinjamai Tiro find ways of doing things differently are both very empowering. Our response times, not just at council, our response times even as government. I must be saying, Honorable Deputy Minister, this is a matter of priority. I'm bringing a document to your office. You accept the priority and agency that within seven days the ministry has put its input. If we don't do that, the number of days, weeks, months that we take to process things will continue to be high. We must find reasons to say yes more than we find reasons to say no. We should have very little by way of excuses, very little by way of apologies. We must never apologize for what we seek to do. Let's put the best foot forward. If we don't have the internal resources, let's use outsiders. Even this process, this engagement we're doing, we're realizing that outside of us as ministry, outside of us as council, there are consultants and partners who can help us refashion the way we engage uh, with our potential partners, be they business, um, business investments or other projects. So with those remarks, I'm saying it can be business as usual. Let's find the space to speed up our engagement, to speed up our licenses, to make Harare and the country more attractive in terms of doing business. I thank you.